All right, welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Our guest tonight is one of the co-hosts of The Road Show, which airs each weekday morning from 8 to 9 a.m. on Fox Providence. We're thrilled that he's here with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to Wicked Late, Mr. Sean Tempesta. Sean, how are you, sir? How are you, Mr. Kirby? I am fine. And about, about you calling me Mr.? Oh. I like it. Oh, okay. But uh, <laughs> so just letting you know that, just putting it out there. Yeah. So many questions I have for you. Oh, my. You, I have so many answers. All right, good. You're, Hopefully. You're, you know, the quintessential talk show guest, then. I hope. Let's hope. All right. Well, right. you've said Where's that. Where's the tiger? You've are we, <laughs> come on. Are we going to have the, the pets come on? Calm down. Okay. Jo Joan Embry will be out here later. <laughs> but calm down. Uh, so many things I want to know about you. You know, the, the legend that is Sean Tempesta, the local hero that you are. Talk to me about uh, your start, where you're originally from, and how, as a kid, you uh, developed an interest and affinity for broadcasting. Yeah, you know, I was, uh, I, I'm, I'm originally from Revere, Massachusetts, which is just north of Boston. Now, my dad and I, we talked, you know, because I'm not originally from Rhode Island. I right. want to gain the respect of Rhode Island. Okay. My dad's a little bit more street smart than me. He's like, Sean, listen, <laughs> if anyone says you're not from Rhode Island, just say, back in the day, Re uh, Revere was the only city that uh, reported back to pa Patriarca. The rest of them reported back to Boston, but you, Re Re Revere uh, went back to Rhode Island. So I actually, Revere actually has Rhode Island ties. So that's true. Your dad doesn't drink a lot then. No. For a minute it sounded... Uh... I, I don't know. I guess it's true. I'm just going to... He has not been wrong yet. So okay. Well, fantastic. But, you know, I watched, uh, I watched the news and, and Double Dare constantly as a child. Mark, Mark Summers. Summers. How can you go wrong? My hero. I <laughs> love that too. guy. How can you have the messiest show on television and have OCD? <laughs> How does that happen? Somehow so, he made it. It was marriage he made work. Exactly. And I realized it, it clicked when I was eight. I was like... They get paid for that. <laughs> yes. That's great. So I went into public access, and I did public access for, well, I'm still doing it. So, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. what, 17 years? Wow. Yeah, so. I, so you get started in access when you were eight. Mm -hmm. I was 23. So no, I'm a little wrong, slow. No, there's nothing wrong with that. You're <laughs> yeah. doing a fantastic job. Oh, please. I'll uh, do the jokes, Sean. Well, <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I knew about Thank you the second day I came here. I was like, I want to be on that show. But I didn't want to call and say, hey, let me be a guest. So it had nothing to do with the photos so, so we sorry. have on you. <laughs> Bear with me, Sean. 10-4. They're flattering, I must say. They're very, very flattering. Well, thank you. So when Ooh, you were no. a kid and stuff, you developed this interest. And do you yeah. remember what your, your first... Now, you, you got started... Did you really get started in radio when you were got to be a little older? Or did you always balance the television and the radio? Well, I always wanted to do television. And I real, I had kind of jacked up teeth when mm -hmm. I was younger. Uh, I got hit. I got... No, 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 no they're $12,000 worth of work. They don't look so bad. <laughs> very nice. Exactly. But a baseball in the teeth from the only girl on your team... Come on, it was Lily. a softball, be honest. This guy, you know, <laughs> no, listen, it, was, it was a baseball, it was Little League, and I got it right square in the tooth, boom, knocked out. Wow. Shoved it right back in. Other one, kind of root canal, and it came a little dark. So you didn't put so. those in before you came here tonight? No, no, luckily <laughs> they are permanent. Very All right. exciting. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I always wanted to do TV, and then I used a karaoke machine at home, and I had Kids 101.1. <laughs> that and was, was your do, own, yeah. you invented I this? I invented a station. I had, nice. like, three CDs, which right. was, like, the Where in the World is Carmen San Diego soundtrack, right. and, uh, and, like, some Christian rock band. <laughs> and it was an awesome station. Nice. Yeah. Now, you seem like a, a, very, like a natural when it comes to being on camera. And, uh, no, I think so. And so, at any point in your television, radio, broadcasting careers, have you been nervous, or has it always yes. just been something that you've been able to do easily? Well, no, I, I've been nervous. The first show... I did. I, the first show I ever had on public access was called The Show. The Show. I couldn't come up with a name. Great the name. Show. Tremendous. And I would just do anything on the show. I, I went from Britney, interviewing Britney Spears in like episode four to interviewing the local uh, sports host for the like you know for the high school basketball <laughs> games on the first show. So it was it was all over the place. But um, there was one show on The Show. Uh, it was the tenth show. I was so I was so excited. I had my bleach blonde hair because that was well it was never cool, but I thought it was. Right. I got a memo. It was. <laughs> And I have this band called If You Say So. Okay. Live band, or live you know, show. I've done two live shows before. I broke records at the call-ins and everything. Right. I had about 15 questions lined up. You know how long that went for? <laughs> Tell Two minutes. Two minutes and you were live up. Live for an hour. <laughs> I have the tape. It will never see the light of day. Oh, but it is man. just me looking at the camera just like, Oh, we, sucks. We need a new research department here. <laughs> yeah. When you come back, sir, you're done. Uh, yeah, That's all I, I can was, tell you. Uh, that was the end of the show, and yeah. then I made M Zone, which is a music video show. So oh, there fantastic. we go. Just uh, buried, buried the show. Buried forever. I never got an appropriate burial. Now, when uh, you've been doing all these different kind of uh, television broadcasts and different kind of projects and stuff like that, eventually you found yourself at the audition for The Road Show, which yeah. brought you here to us. Mm. Now, tell us about that process. What was that like for you? I was on air at FUM 107. Mm -hmm. uh, I do that weekends uh, in, in Fairhaven. And, uh, a kid from Warren, actually, Jeff 
Keegan, okay. 17 year old. He had called in and requested songs and always won contests and stuff. He's like, hey, there's this thing for Fox Province called The Road Show. And right. I just got the teeth done. Like, oh, so this is prior. perfect kismet. I'm like, this is a synergy of like beautifulness. <laughs> I'm like, all right, sure, I'll come in. And I was uh, a contestant number 41. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was in, I was behind somebody who was a, a USC, about to graduate from USC for communications. I'm like, well, I'm obviously unqualified. Certainly, yeah. Uh, so I walked in and I, uh, I the, the, um, uh, Tony Bristol was there yeah. from, from 92 Pro uh -huh. FM. I always wanted to work at Pro FM. I yeah. probably sent him 18 demos. <laughs> I never got a job there. And I'm like, again, I'm doomed. This yeah. will not happen. I'm a, big, I'm a big fan of Tony's hair. Have you ever I'm, seen how Tony's that works? Tony's hair is absolutely wind uh, It's like the front of the Titanic it is, is what fantastic. I used to say. Honestly, I used to try to do my hair like that, but it's receding. <laughs> and it's just his could like, man. Cut through butter. Yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a debonair fellow, he is, is what he he's is. He's quite suave. So, uh, you know, I actually tried out for that show as well. You know, I, I heard. I, you've heard things, yeah. yeah. I thought my, uh, my audition went fairly well. You know, sure, Karen Adams threw a shoe at me, but other oh. than that, you know, I thought it went. It is a very expensive shoe. Oh, I'm sure it was. Sold it on eBay. She doesn't fool around, no. and it just missed me. But other than that, <laughs> I thought mine went very well. So, after you were done with your, your first round, how did you feel going into the site? Did you feel you would get the call back? Well, what was your state of mind at that point? Honestly, it was indifferent. I I felt as though I gave it the best shot I could. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, the one thing in the first audition was you had to read something on paper, like right. do this promo, like Family Guy, weekdays at yes. eight on Fox Profit. That's right. And I'm like, all right, well, I know I got that down. They called me back and I sort of felt, I got a trick question asked of me in the <laughs> second uh, audition or second uh, interview. Tony Bristol asked, what is a Kindle? A Kindle. What's a Kindle? I, you know, I got to check my dictionary, but okay. go ahead. A Kindle is a the ebook reader on Amazon.com, like it's a, yeah, I know, it's exactly, I'm a yeah. nerd, Good I have question, nothing. question, Tony, nice Girls job. Girls don't like me, but I go <laughs> on a bunch of websites and I'm like, Kindle, boom, it's that. I was so proud of myself. Wow. Later. I never You're probably I'd, the only one who knew it. Congratulations. I, I don't know. That's why you got the I don't even, yeah, because I knew it. No, you're fantastic. That sold 50, Random question, though. Wow. But well, that just shows you when you go on an audition, you never know what to expect. Never. Anything can happen, and you've got to prepare for. You've got to be prepared for any and all circumstances. I've done auditions for everything. I did an no. audition for, uh, remember the show Hole in the Wall on Fox? I do not. It was this big styrofoam wall that would come after you, and you're supposed <laughs> to jump through the wall. Ah. And me and two friends auditioned for it, went down to New York, and yeah. we thought we killed it. Of course. Never got a call back. Never got a call back. That's the way it works. But see, persistent. Persistence is key. You were persistent. Finally, yeah. you got the call back, and now here you are. Here I and am. now, how do you? Who, what's the deal on those two co-hosts that you work with? Uh, Vince Dementry, who is much more professional than I am, as is Lily okay. uh, Elizabeth Hopkins. Uh, they are the they they do the the morning news mm -hmm. at PRI and at Fox Province before the show, and uh, they are um, um, going into their fourth hour of broadcasting. Yeah, and I'm starting my first. Yeah, so you're and I'm fresh. And I'm bushy-tailed, and they hate me for so it. So do you think you could take Vince? If it came down to the two, Vince, could you drop let him? let me tell you something. I, have, I didn't realize it with the suit on. We did a promo shoot, like phot uh, photography, and he was just wearing, he was wearing a shirt, and that guy oh, thankfully. could kill an ape. Really? He is... Absolutely. And has. I just, it says right here, he actually has. He's <laughs> he was, murdered in an ape. He was, bra he was bragging today that he benched 365 pounds. Really? A kid could kill me. Call him on it on the show. That'd be a great I want segment. him to lift me. That would be tremendous. He, but he would throw me through the roof. He would, yeah. Well, <laughs> well it seems like you guys have real, real chemistry in that room. You know, you yeah. guys are really cut out for our morning show environment because I think uh, in addition to, to peppiness, because yeah. you are Mr. Peppy. Uh, yes, I'm If I do say so right myself. Now. You've the got, makeup makes it not look so bad. You've got to have that chemistry. And you guys really seem to have that when you're doing that show every day and do you feel that's what makes a morning show work that yeah. what drives oh, it oh man and you know what though it's got to be laid back and fun mm. like if there's a mistake on the show let's make fun of it yeah sure. that's than, exactly oh well well rather like ever whenever yeah. someone screws up on their yeah. script they're like well well blah rather sure we don't do the blah rather there we actually we, we lay back we laugh if somebody makes a mistake we uh we roll with the punch and what types of things are you doing on the show for the viewers out there who may not have seen it what uh, are you doing out there uh, what, well, what should they tune in to see oh, man there's just so much stuff i've been pole dancing Really? Yeah, I've, now I've, I don't like the sound of this. I've seen you on a promo sliding down a pole. I have not slept since. No, you know, and I don't blame you. I haven't slept since. Yeah. The, the, the hair. The chafing. Been, yeah, oh, please, Sean. I'm sorry. We might be out of time. Are we out of time? I think maybe we are. But uh, so, It's a fun show. You have to watch. 8 a.m. Fox Brown. And you're just having a ball there every single weekday morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sean, really, continued success. Best of luck to you. Brendan, thank you so much for having me on the show. Honestly, now, this is a seat that so many have been in before. And yeah, I'm glad that I can be here. Thank you so much for your time. We're thrilled to have you here. And uh, about the dressing room earlier, just, you know, that's between us. Listen, I have lawyers. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll work something out. Okay, I have a an plea intern. deal. I have an intern. Oh. So Ron even keel. I have two. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Sean Tempesta, ladies and gentlemen, from the Roadshow Weekdays at AM Fox Providence. We'll be right back after.